Hey everyone, it's Dylan, and today I'll be doing a movie review of probably one of the most influential movies in my life, and that is Scream. So Scream is celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, specifically today. And like I said, this is one of the most influential movies in my life, and I think that it probably is one of the things that helps me bridge the gap from children's horror into horror genre as we know it. I, re I started with the horror genre very young, but I mean I would credit like Scooby-Doo and Goosebumps and then I got into Scream and all the other things. So it was really one of those stepping stones that helps me get as immersed into the horror genre as I am now. And it will always hold a special place in my heart. So let's get into what this movie is about. One year after the brutal death of Maureen Prescott, the town of Woodsboro finds itself in a new wave of brutal murders. And now Maureen's daughter, Sydney, is at the forefront of this, of this new string of murders. And will she survive? Will she not survive? We don't know. Let's talk about Kevin Williamson. He is the writer for this movie, and I think that I would credit him with basically reinvigorating the horror genre in the mid-90s. And you can see basically his stamp on horror movies all the way to present day. There's so many horror movies that are based around Scream that are have the feel of Scream. I mean, even this year we had the Fear Street series, which was heavily influenced by the Scream franchise. We see the impact that Kevin Williams had had on the genre of horror and of pop culture as a whole. And then we also have our director, Wes Craven. And this was probably, this might have been my second time watching a Wes Craven movie. Uh, the first movie I probably watched of Wes Craven's was A Nightmare on Elm Street and then Scream. So I didn't really know a ton about Wes Craven but I've grown to really love Wes Craven and the work that he did. I think that he doesn't get a lot of credit, particularly with the camera work. A lot of, I've heard many people say that Wes Craven's not really a stylistic director, he just sets the camera and films what's going on. And to some point, I would agree with that. He's not very stylistic. When I rewatched Scream this time around, I didn't happen to start noticing these shots that I had never really noticed before and how he has these like long take tracking shots, uh, particularly with Sydney and particularly with Casey Becker. And these shots are filmed in such a way that it kind of has this feeling like the character is being stalked, and you are the person stalking the character. And I really did appreciate that, and it was something that I hadn't really ever noticed before until I rewatched it this time, and I was like, you know, this is actually really kind of unsettling, and that's all Wes, and I really do think that he doesn't get as much credit as he should for these movies. Now let's talk about one of everyone's favorite things, the cold open of this movie with Casey Becker and our first introduction to Ghostface. This is one of the best openings in a movie ever. I mean, I don't think that there is another movie I can think of that has such a good opening. And Drew Barrymore is great in this. The fact that it was kind of all her idea is also quite insane. The really did start this like trend of having these cold opens in movies that kind of did this like shock and awe type of deal. And I really do wish that I was old enough at the time to see this in theaters and have the reaction of having this giant star Drew Barrymore in this movie and then she gets killed right away. I think that that would have been insane 
probably a Marvel level film experience. I think that that would just be really awesome. And then we can't talk about Scream without talking about our trio, who are Sydney, Gail, and Dewey. This is just a really great group of people, and I am glad that they've survived all of these movies. I am a little worried about what's going to happen in Scream 5, um, or the Scream. I do really like these characters. I think that they are very realistic characters. Like, they're not super exaggerated or anything like that. Like, there's an element of realism to all of them, and I think that that's what makes... This movie, one of the better of the, like, big franchises is because we have these characters. None of the other big franchises have characters that span the entire franchise. And so we've had four movies so far to follow these characters and fall in love with these characters and really get to know these characters. So these characters are just really great and I think that what Nev and Courtney and David have done with the characters are all really great as well. One of my favorite parts of Scream is the entire third act of this movie. Once we get to Stu Mocker's house Everything there is perfection. I think that it's just so good. We have the great garage door kill. We have the infamous telling of the horror movie rules. We have the killer reveal. We have so much great stuff in this third act. I mean, even the set piece of this house, insane. And now, let's get to the actual killer reveal. Two people. It's Sue Mocker and Billy Loomis. And, you know, when I was watching it this time around, I, I watched Scream about once a year. And while I was watching it this time around, I kind of came to this conclusion that the voice of Ghostface, I forget what his name is, the guy who voices Ghostface, it just kind of sounds like Ski Ulrich. Like, they have the same kind of voice, and if Ski Ulrich could just change his voice just a little bit, I think he would be very close to what the ghost face voice was. There is something to say about the idea that these two characters are gay, or at least somewhere on the spectrum. I've heard that argument before, and I would agree to some extent. I think that Stu is probably more likely to be the queer character, and I think Billy is could be, but he doesn't read as queer to me as the entire situation and as Stu. Speaking of Stu, Matthew Lillard gives one of the best performances in this movie. It is so outrageous, so over the top, that you just can't help but love it. It's like not so bad that it's bad. It's not really bad at all. It's just such an over the top performance. It truly is campy in this like really interesting way. And I quote lines from Matthew Lillard all the time, like the, yeah, I'm getting a little woozy here, <laughs> like I quote that all the time. I'm even kind of wearing the uh, Stu Mocker cosplay, like I love Matthew Lillard in this movie and I just think that he makes the entire last half of this movie. He is just such a great character and such a great performance. And lastly, before I get into my rating of this movie, there's no denying that Scream has such a huge cultural impact. It's a franchise that has spanned since 1996. Uh, currently, there's going to be a new movie next year, and the 90s were plagued with Scream ripoffs. Um, really great movies, too. I mean, I know what you did last summer was kind of a Scream ripoff, uh, also by Kevin Williamson, 
Um, another one was Urban Legend. I really love Urban Legend and there's a multitude of other ones. There's like Valentine and a whole bunch of other things. I, the Scream even got a television show. It is so ingrained in pop culture. It created this whole almost subgenre of movies which are meta movies. And I just really think that it's such a great great thing. I mean, I can't gush about this movie anymore, and I'm about to, because my rating for this movie is a 5 out of 5. This is a perfect film for me. On this rewatch, I was like, you know, there's nothing that I would change about this movie, because I think that it just does such a great job. What else is there left to say? So if you have not already subscribed and you'd like to be, please hit that subscribe button down below, and give this video a like if you liked it. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day. Bye.